Welcome back to Let's Play Okami. We've gone through the Spirit Gate, and it appears we're back in Kamiki Village. But things also don't appear quite as they seem. So Sakuya's tree turned into a sapling. And you are adorable. Shakuya. Maybe she's related to Sakuya. They're both wood sprites, but she's so young. Oh well. Oh, and we can actually turn right around. The tree's still not here. But the sapling is. Hmm. Well, I'm still not entirely certain what's going on here, but let's take a look around and see what we can find. That gate certainly wasn't here before. Might as well go up to the observation deck first. Of all places to go, this is probably the quickest. There's a number of trees in here we can bloom, and in fact this whole area is an area that um, you can't get back to if you don't do everything in here when you can. Thankfully there's not really, really anything missable here. I'll point out a couple things that are. They're not terribly important. Mr. Orange! Wait, that's not an orange on your head. Orochi? I don't think we have too much to worry about from him. Orochi, though, and the sapling is still a sapling. As you no doubt have guessed by this point, this isn't the Kamiki village we know and love. 
In fact, it appears we've been sent into the past. Now, there's plenty of praise in here to get. Though you don't get terribly much from these trees. Maybe one? Yeah, one. And now, not only that, but with our ability to walk on water, we can quickly run over here, where there is a clover waiting for us. And that clover actually isn't placed in right on a digging spot. So, dig nearby, I suppose. And nothing else over there. Well, if we are indeed in the past, then... Let's see what else has happened in the city. The small village of Kamiki. <laughs> <laughs> it appears that back in the sh back in Shiranui's day, everyone everyone thought Shiranui was Orochi's representative, so to say. Wait, would that make you? Oh well. Now one missable here is this dog. This is the only animal in this entire area, but if you don't feed it here, then you're stuck. I mean, if you're shooting, if you're shooting to fill your various um, books and whatnot, one of them has all of the animals you've fed in it. And if you're shooting for 100% of that, you can't forget this dog. And hey there, buddy, you have a UFO. Now, I don't know what it is, but I'm certain that little UFO has to be a reference to something. So, if anybody happens to know... We're not Shiranui, though. Well, we kind of are. And, of course, he guns for us, too. Well, nobody around here likes Shiranui, but of course, if they all thought that Shiranui was, um, a familiar of Orochi, then I can only imagine. There, lady. Wait, the night of the full moon? He does give us some fruitcakes, though. Glorious fruitcakes. And once again, we can run out here on the uh, water, get a couple clovers and whatnot. And way back on this little back island here, there is, if memory serves, a thing we can dig up behind it. With a pearl in it. Now, I'm not going to grab every treasure chest back here. Um, there's a couple more hidden underwater. So, if you run up here under the bridge, there's a couple up there. Oh, well, we've spoken to just about everybody. Bloomed most of the trees. Wait, but if this is the night of the full moon, though... Then this is... 
not only the Knight of Orochi's sacrifice, but if... Then this is going to be the night that Nagi slays Orochi. We've gone back in time to that fateful night. So I suppose that makes you... Nagi. Come on, wake up. You have important things to do tonight. Uh, the spitting image of Susano. You can even see the evil in the air. No, that's not what I do at all. Now, Susano had a lot of natural talent, but he lacked practice and he lacked polish. Nagi? That seems to be exactly what's happened. And we're stuck facing down with Nagi, the legendary warrior, who is not to be trifled with. Now, the Nagi fight works exactly like the Waka fight, the Oki fight, the Rao fight that we've had all up until now. The difference being that this arena is exceedingly tiny. As such, fighting at range is unfeasible. There's just not enough room to dodge everything consistently. Even knocking back the blades. So, the best way to fight Nagi is keep it close range. But you have to be careful, though, because he will... Oh, if he summons those swords, I'm in for a world of hurt. This is going surprisingly well this far, but keep in mind, he is a close-range fighter. I'm hitting him off the... Oh, shoot, 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 shoot! He is a close-range fighter, though, so if you don't keep up the offensive, he will do some damage to you. And be ready to dodge at any given time. That fight is actually, if you don't make that a close range and keep on the offensive, that is an exceedingly hard fight.
a hundred years in the past. The night of Nagi's story. That's a good question. Now, I know they're not going to pull some crap like, we are the real Shiranui, and we went back in time to do that, because Shiranui was at full power. We are not. There was still a big difference between the two of us, so... Shiranui's around here somewhere. Knocking out Nagi may have, though. Well, we don't have many options at this point. To make sure that the legend goes as intent as it was originally told, we have to replicate it to the best to the best of our ability. Oh, 
Oh, the eight purification socket, just like in the legend. Yeah, I wasn't talking. Okay, so we gotta swipe the rope. Oh, well, there it is. Now, I certainly suppose we can't just run up to it full speed, so a little slinking is in order. I think we're good. Yes! The rope is ours! Also, I missed a tree. With this, we can have Nagi dress up like Nami and try to fool Orochi. I'd comment on Isun saying he looks pretty, but to be honest, I don't think I could have said it better. Sarcasm fully intended. Okay, so he's dressed up like Nami. So, and with that, we're off! All we have to do is get him to the moon cave, so he can take down Orochi. Now, back here in Shinshu Field, there's a couple things to concern yourselves with. The first of which being... our local group of enemies. Yet another reskin of the imps. Not really anything to worry about. They actually act almost exactly like the, um, Namahaga, I think that's what they were called. Come on, buddy. And complete with getting hit, uh, flipping back, doing the whole nine yards. Pretty much exactly like the, um, Namahaga do. I think they even have just about the same life, too. I know the imps kind of spun back, too, but it never seemed as annoying. Now, I do have... Okay, I do have the Peace Bell equipped. There's a couple things to worry about out here. Um, I mentioned that the one dog was missable. At the same time, if you're going for a complete beastery, you'll want to be clearing out all of these demon scrolls out here to fill up the um, clay soldier. Because there is a clay soldier for each one of the... Oh, come on. There's a clay soldier representative for each one of the various um, imps. So you'll want to be sure to go through all of the scrolls to meet up with all of them. I'm not going to bother showing that off. Oh, and also you can go through here. And a chest appears. I'm not going to be showing off every one of these uh, demon scrolls out here just to show off all the enemies, but um, I will be updating the forum post with all of the enemies' character sheets. So there's that. Now there's actually a good amount of praise out here, mostly in the form of these clovers. There's a couple of diggable spots here and there. Good amount of praise, as I mentioned. In fact, I should have enough praise right now to give myself another astral pouch. You can see right over there is where Onigiri Sensei's uh, thing was. 
More clovers? Um, I actually skipped by a lot of the clovers, but there are a lot of them out here. That said, we move on to the Moon Cave to complete the legend. Of course, it looks just as foreboding as it does a hundred years in the future, complete with giant vortex in the sky above it. Well, one way or another, in we go. Ah yes, before that. Yet another enemy that, um, you, act, you see it most, you see it right here, you may also see it a bit later on in the game if memory serves, anyway. Is it a Doki? Dogi? Something like that. This thing is not a nice enemy to fight. And I'll say the reason that I don't like it is once again because of the size of the arena. He is an attack where he summons a good number of swords. You can also teleport around the arena, but if you slow down time, you can actually follow him. Now, he has a move where he summons all of these swords that fly in, and they home in on you, so it becomes very troubling to dodge them consistently. But once again, as long as you sl keep time slowed, the fight isn't that hard. Make sure to take them out one at a time with time slowed. As soon as the first one goes down, it should get a lot easier after that. right. Going back in time, Orochi's going to be a great deal more powerful now than he was mere moments after he woke up a hundred years from now. And according to the legend, Shiranui died at the end of the fight. We're not even at our peak, so what hope could we have? Well, I'd say it's partially due to the fact that we died too. Ah, oh, good to see you're awake. And that's the perfect plan, of course. That's what I planned all along, yes. She awaits his sacrifice. Oh. 
Guess he didn't fall for it. Oh, and the barrier's up now, too. Well, there's no turning back now. So we enter the moon cave. Orochi's lair. At least the eight purification sake was left in here. And thus we enter the moon cave, Orochi's lair, where we find Orochi in peak condition. And ourselves not yet at peak condition. So until next time, everyone, when we face down Orochi in his true form.